So I have been toying now for a little while with the idea of building more PCs on the channel and playing about with the overall objective of the PCs that I put together. Now the idea has really come from upgrading my gaming rig behind me and you can check those videos up in the corner there. Now I enjoyed putting that PC together so much that I did get a bit of an itch to build another one and as I had my old motherboard, my old processor and some RAM left over from that previous upgrade, I thought why not make this really the starting point for some kind of new strand for the TechnoOvo channel. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, KeysFan. If you're ready for a PC upgrade, then KeysFan has you covered. KeysFan offers legal Windows OEM keys at a fraction of what you can expect from retail. And with more than 100,000 registered customers, you can feel safe knowing that you're going to be looked after. All keys supplied are official keys and KeysFan offer 24 seven customer support, 365 days a year. What's more, it's easy to purchase by visiting the homepage, choosing what you want and following the checkout process. You can pay via PayPal or credit or debit cards here in the UK, and you can use coupon code NU50 to get 50% off Windows keys, and NU62 to get 62% off Microsoft Office and bundle deals. So what are you waiting for? Visit keysfan.com to get started on your next Windows purchase. But do hurry though, because supplies are limited. Now, back to the video. So going into the new rig is my old Gigabyte X570S UD motherboard with my old Ryzen 7 5800X processor. I've got some 32 gig Crucial Ballistics RAM sticks for it as well. And I purchased the 3060 Ti from someone on eBay and paid just 173 pounds for it, including delivery. So I was happy with that. I've got a one terabyte M2 SSD from a company called Fanjang for 45 pounds and a just stop 650 watt power supply for just 22 pounds. Don't know any of those brands, but their reviews on eBay were okay and they were cheap. And my budget for this new rig is absolutely tiny. Now, lastly, I have got a standard AMD Wraith CPU fan cooler type thing for 11 pound. And it's all being built inside of a first player Go 6 case, which I got from CCL for 34 pounds, which includes a few pre-installed RGB fans to make it look all quite nice and clean and gamery. All in all, I did spend 297 pound, which does include a Windows key on that as well. Now let me put it all together and I'll be right back. So overall the build is done. It was extremely easy to put together except the front IO pins, they were an absolute nightmare. And overall I do think it does look quite smart. I am a particular fan of the modular power supply, and even though it is a non-modular power supply, I was drawn to it because of the black cables to suit the overall build aesthetic, but also the price as well. Now, the white light of the graphics card as well was un unexpected, though I do think it looks quite smart inside of the build. I would have liked the Wraith to light up just a little bit. Next time, I think in hindsight, maybe some kind of RGB cooler in this style build might have suited it. And one issue I am finding at the moment, if you can see, is the fans. They do switch off and they do fade in and out. There is an LED uh, switch on the case itself, but I haven't got an LED switch input on my motherboard. So the button, unfortunately, I'm just not able to, for some reason, get the light patterns to change on the fans, which is a bit frustrating, but that's the way it goes. I haven't got the correct motherboard for that kind of thing. Uh, but overall, not a bad build at all. I think it does look quite smart and having that black overall color. Maybe I could swap out the fans a little bit. There you go, the lights have just turned back on. You can see that now, I think, maybe in the corner of the video. But anyway, the lights have come back on. So no idea why it, it does that in the first place, but uh, no big deal. It's a mid-range tower. And if you don't need the RGB fans or you swap them out for something else, then, uh, then that's the way to go as well. So overall performance wise, let's run some benchmarks to check that out now. So first off, we're jumping into a game of Apex Legends, which is a fairly simple game to run on a mid tier gaming PC like this one. As you can see, our average FPS falling in was hovering around the 165. We're up to 169, which is uh, fairly decent. The frame rate, depending on what we're looking at, is anywhere from like 188 into the 200s with a 1% low at the moment of 120. Now we have got a little bit of action on screen going on at the moment, so I am going to take a look at what's going on over here. Now do be uh, warned, 
I am not the best at this game and I am currently playing against bots, which uh, should give you a bit more of a uh, bit more of an example of how this how this game will perform in an actual scenario. Now diving into a bit of action there, of course it's not that busy. Uh, we are now at a 1% low of 108 and uh, an average of 170, so that's fairly, fairly decent with a frame rate of 102. So let's just get rid of these two enemies in the cutscenes. It does drop down to around the 180 mark. Seeing as CS2 is probably one of the biggest esports games out there right now and super easy to run on mid-range gaming PCs like the one we've built here, I thought, why not give it a quick blast? I am playing against bots at the moment because playing online, you'll just be looking at a kill feed again and again and again. So right now we are hitting an average of 154 FPS, sort of hovering around the 180s, the 190s. It does sometimes... Uh, hit the uh, 200s if you're inside of, of anywhere and it hasn't got much to render on the screen but we are getting an fps one percent low of around 77 to 76 fps which really isn't that bad at all we are currently running at a 1440p resolution with a decent setting on the graphics presets so we just dived into some doom the dark ages not my favorite doom game i must admit i did prefer doom eternal somewhat just because of those weird flying bits and getting into big robots and uh, other bits of this game that's all about throwing this shield. I'm not a massive fan, I must admit. Uh, anyway, at the moment we are falling off the edge because I sprinted at the edge too far, but we are hitting an average FPS of 73 with a frame rate of 70 and a 1% low of 57. After seeing how this game actually performs, I'm not hugely fussed that the, the, the quality is stuck down at um, whatever. I can't remember what I've got it switched on, to be honest with you, but I'm not mad about it because at least it's, a, it's another playable game, right? So you may be thinking, why am I playing on this view mode on Forza Motorsport? It's because the last couple of races I've run, I've run out of road and the cars in front have literally just not stopped driving and just absolutely bopped me off the track. So I'm just going to stay at the back for the purpose of this uh, example of what you can achieve on something like Forza Motorsport. Now, I am locked at 60, as you can see. If you do play this game multiplayer, then you are going to be locked at 60 FPS. They put a cap on that. So I haven't bothered to look into how to unlock that cap so uh so yeah that's exactly what you're going to be getting here okay so welcome to hell divers 2 i've just piggybacked onto uh, a mission here that's already in progress just uh, to give a demonstration of the type of quality that you can get from this game on this pc it's currently running at 1440p on a higher graphical preset ultra quality rendering or something like that um on the, the graphic settings as well can't quite remember but as you can see we are hitting an average of 78 fps at the moment i am playing on easy mode so it's not really getting it's not really going to get too uh too intense but uh it'll just give you an idea of uh how this game can run okay so i've just dived into a game of hunt showdown uh this game has been out for quite a while now made by crytek i think it's made by crytek anyway the people that make crisis and things like that it's a fairly popular multiplayer game and it looks absolutely stunning they've just had a massive revamp to this game which is why i thought i'd give it a try at the moment we are getting an fps average of 119 although it was up at 120 a moment ago when i looked uh with a um one percent low of 88 i have turned off all of the sort of super graphical settings uh, for like motion blur and um, shadow depth of field and that kind of thing, just so, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, who has those turned on anyway? Reflections look absolutely wonderful. I'm currently running at 1440p at a high graphical preset. There is uh, also DLSS 
on as well at balanced just to make the game as smooth as possible. So we've jumped into a game of Overwatch 2, the old trusty favorite and probably my favorite sort of competitive esports arena shooter type games. I play this game a hell of a lot and from benchmarks I've done in the past, absolutely right that this game can run on and just the, the craziest of low specs ever. But uh, as you can see at the moment, we are getting an average uh, FPS of 105. My 1% low, unfortunately, is absolutely tiny at 6 FPS. Uh, unsure why that is. Uh, if I do hit the re-benchmark button to refresh that, it does just really tank. So the actual F, uh, the 1% lows is holding at around 90. So maybe, maybe the start was a little bit of an anomaly when it dropped. Seemed to be anyway. Because uh, at the moment, oh my goodness, why are we worrying about a Genji at the back? And to showcase some temperatures that were achieved throughout testing, if we look at our CPU at the moment, you can see that we did hit a max of 92 uh, on the package temperature, or 92.5 degrees Celsius, although it is at the moment holding around 70, dropping because we're not obviously playing any games, um, and a minimum of 47. I'm not too um, bothered about that. Yes, it did get a little bit toasty, but uh, the PC is under my desk. Airflow is relatively decent on the case, though, so uh, I'm not, again, worried. It's a 5800X Ryzen 7 processor, so it's it's going to run hot. When it did come to the GPU, you can see that the temperature hit a max of 74.4 degrees Celsius. Again, I'm not too fussed about that. It is hovering at the moment around 41, so the fans on the GPU have brought that down quite quickly after playing a round of fortnight uh, and then as a minimum temperature you're looking at 35.8 which is again the gpu temperature i am very pleased with it's no nowhere near uh, concerning whatsoever so yeah overall temperature wise pretty good going so thank you so much for checking out the build let us know below what you think and if you would put something like this together for yourself or if you've got any questions about the build then feel free to ask us as well also what would you do if you were me? Would you sell it? Would you put the cash into another build for another video or use this case as a test bed for testing older GPUs? As I've got a couple of those laying around as well to turn into videos. Again, I don't know what direction this is going to take at the moment, but I am enjoying this journey so far now. Two PC builds down, let's see where it goes. So anyway, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.